where it's like, yo, celebrity worship. We're worshiping celebrities. Mm -hmm. At one point in time, I put this dude on a major pedestal, and he ain't the only one that's been there. Jay been there, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Pac been there, Big been there, Nas been there. It's, it's a bunch of people that have sat on that pedestal of like, bro, you inspire me. And these kids come up to me and they tell me the same thing now. And it's like, and sometimes, and there's nothing wrong with that, you inspire me. But it's, but it's when it's at an unhealthy level that I fear. And I feel like, I feel like for the majority of us, our fascination and our interest in celebrities and what they do for us it's an unhealthy level. is unhealthy. <clears throat> it's like one of those, it's like earlier when I talked about something that I want to overcome, something that I don't like, I don't like that. And being on Twitter around that time that kind of happening, that part of me, there's something that I don't like about myself. Cause I was in that too, like, yo, what is this nigga saying? This nigga tripping, like, but I'm in it. Mm -hmm. I'm in it and I could feel the, the fact that it was impossible to look away. It's like the drinking. It's like, yo, if I can't just turn this thing off, if I can't stop looking, then I'm being controlled by this thing. Mm -hmm. And what's controlling me? Wow. My fascination with you. Mm -hmm. My fascination with celebrity. My fascination with gossip. My fascination with drama. My fascination with other people's lives yeah. who, I, who have been deemed worthy because of the level of success or money that they've a, a achieved. And it's like, that bothers me for myself. And it bothers me for the world, too. Why do we believe these people? Why do we blindly give out our trust to them? It's because of a simple understanding that Satan knows and exploits, especially within the Hebrews. Over the past couple of weeks, as I've been putting together information from many books to deliver concrete understanding on a topic that needs to be understood, I have been seeing the enemy working against this message that myself and many others are working to deliver. There is a problem that needs to be fully addressed, and as we move deeper into these times, I want to make sure that this understanding has been firmly addressed, and that a proper viewpoint has been provided, so that when those that are not falling for the mind control and the manipulation speak to others that are, they can clearly explain what it is that is happening, and we help keep many other people from falling for these traps. You see this right here? You know what this is called? Yes, it's the television. But there was also another name for it that many people have used. It's a term that was created around the 50s when the television started being mass distributed to homes across America. It's called the idiot box. Well, let me show you first. Huey, darling, we got you a present for doing so well at school. It's a television. An alarming new study suggests that television could turn your child into a moron. Moron, this story next. Neighbor punishes neighbor. This is a great product. Open up, you bastard. I know you're in there. Door. So, yes, it is a device that is known to make us stupid. People went from being entertained by books and the skill of their own hands to being entertained by this idiot box. And over the last 70 years since the television was first mass distributed, this big device went from one main location in our homes, which was the family room, to then multiple locations in our homes. Oh, oh, oh. Do you have a television? Well, yeah, you know, we have two of them. Wow, you must be rich. Oh, honey, he's teasing you. Nobody has two television sets. <laughs> to then every room in our homes, even bathrooms, to then in the businesses, to places that we may have to go and sit and wait, to now it has been made so small that it goes everywhere we go. Because for the majority, every single one of us walk with one in our hands. And because of it, as a whole, we have been made to be undiscerning idiots. We believe more of what we see on the idiot box more than what we see anywhere else. And because of this, we as a society as a whole have lost a great deal of power. 
and we have been placed in the hands of those who want to lead us and steer us, and they can do this without ever showing themselves. They truly have become puppet masters. But this video is not about the television or the masters that control it, but one of the unfortunate effects that has happened because of the television, which is the rise and power of the celebrity. Because of the rise of the television, the people that control this world found puppets that they were able to control that would then lead and guide our societies. To the masses, you are no one unless you are able to be on television. And once you were on television, it was a big deal. And the more you were on television, and the further your appearance on the television reached, it made you more and more of a celebrity. And over the years, it has been celebrities who have been a strong guiding force of our modern day culture and where this world has gone. Think about what they do and how they use them. They are able to use the celebrity to mold and influence generations. I think Miley Cyrus is a great example of that. For years, when she first came out on the scene, she was this cute little child star with the show Hannah Montana. Now, disclaimer, I never actually saw this show and never knew who she was until my wife explained what those with power used her for. They had all these young girls attached to Hannah Montana, who I believe was a child star in that television show too. I think the show was a big deal. And then, as she got older, she disappeared for a sec, and the next thing you know, the next time her fans saw her, she was twerking on Robin Thicke sticking her tongue out and that whole generation of young girls who followed her were now following her again. They went from the Hannah Montana to the twerking Miley. They grew up under her influence and they followed her. They attached to this culture and these ways of immorality because they followed this one celeb. And that's just one example out of thousands. Like in the Hebrew community, the way we have followed the leaders of hip hop from the 90s is quite sad. The respect that we give to sellouts like Jay-Z, Puff, and Nas is ridiculous. I mean, aren't you all tired of being abused and taken advantage by these people who just get rich and successful off of you? Nas just came out with another album. He made the album cover with the same Masonic message that Jay-Z's Blueprint 3 album had. I mean, now we have 40-year-old men again writing to it like this is what they've been waiting for for years. When this guy is literally just making tracks, just bigging himself up, and giving all y'all phony positive messages. I mean, it's really sad. All us rappers are trapped in it, we can't get out. You know what I'm saying? Till we over, till it's dead, till we in the dirt. When I'm 50 years old, I'm gonna have 50 year old fans, 60 year old fans, and 16 year old fans. Yeah, he's talking about y'all. Grown men, he wants to be your influence for the next decades. And you allow him to. Anyways. The point that I'm trying to make is that the real world, our reality, is really unknown to the majority of the people in this world because unless a celebrity exposes it, it's not real to them. But the thing is that if that is true for you, you need to know you're going down with a sinking ship. Everything these celebs are about. Let me tell you with assurance, they would not be anything if they did not have control and influence over you. But even with that fact, they are not here for you but for themselves in doing the work of their puppet masters that are holding their strings. That's why these people have handlers. The top celebs know what's going down in this world and don't want to go down with the sinking ship that you are on. But in order for them not to go down with it, they have to do their job, which they are paid millions for, and that is to lead you on that ship that is sinking. That might be too deep and it might have gone over some heads, but at this point, this understanding needs to be made clear. It's time that you all stop trusting and following these celebrities, especially when they seem to be exposing truth. If you're believing these people and giving them credibility, you are not in reality. And it's time that you wake up and understand the game. Keep the game, people, and stop being a harlot. Let's begin. For some reason, this word triggers issues on this platform, so I'm using another word that means the same thing. I use this symbol because this is the best description. When I use this symbol as a metaphor of you, those that follow these celebrities and believe them, it's because you keep getting used by these people that don't care about you, but you keep going back and back and giving them your virtue, even though they keep showing you they don't really care about you. 
The minute that they say that they are on your side or they show you a glimpse of being who you want to believe that they were, you go right back to them again, giving them your virtue again. You keep getting used over and over and over. The same action you would judge a promiscuous woman for, you exemplify the same attitude in your life with these same people who you give your ears, your heart, and your mind to. You need to stop doing it. Now, the thing is that for most people, I know it's hard to admit that you're influenced by these people. I know people that will just say, well, I like their music or I like their acting, but they don't influence me. Listen, if you think like that, you are highly deceived and you need to wake up and recognize that you have been blinded. These celebs are not paid millions and given massive platforms because they don't have influence over you. If you can't recognize how they have influenced you, you are still heavily under their influence. Let me explain something to you all that I have explained to my sons. This should have been taught to us all, but apparently it was not, so it needs to be explained here. These are celebrities. These are all people that we see on our idiot boxes. These are all people who have some sort of influence over the masses, whether it's from the television, from movies, music, the news, politics, or sports. These are celebrities. These are the people that have been put in front of us. But what you don't see is who is behind them. Now, you see how many celebs there are, but in the background, the power behind them is not that many. But the thing is that you don't ever get to see the power behind the screen because you're not supposed to. Again, this is why they are puppets and they are controlled by the puppet masters. For instance, when the president gives a speech, it's supposed to sound authentic. You are never supposed to see these two pieces of glass in front of them that is actually providing the words that they're supposed to say. So when we listen and believe the words that they are saying, we need to know if they are actually the ones writing these speeches or is it someone else? We need to ask ourselves, who are we following, the speaker or the writer? Because there is someone proofreading and making sure what is said is what needs to be heard. For instance, when I watched the History Channel series, The Men Who Built America, one scene that stood out to me was how they showed early on in the late 19th century they owned and controlled presidents. At a recent Democrat rally, he's a prohibitionist and a devout Presbyterian. According to him, Darwin's theory of evolution is a pack of lies. He's an enemy of the gold standard and an enemy of big business. It is certain that he will win the Democratic nomination. What do you think? The Republican Party has a good candidate. No. We have to buy our own president. They brought Rockefeller a copy of President McKinley's speech, and Rockefeller made corrections on what the president was allowed to say and not say. Much appreciated. This is McKinley's speech that he'll be giving at the Republican convention. Make sure he sees it in time. Understood. I couldn't believe they showed it. But the truth is that even if they did show it in this television show, because of the lack of critical thinking skills this public has today, because of our education system combined with the influence of this idiot box, they know that people could see that and still not make the connection that this still goes on today. This is why, before the president's speech, the pundits can go on Fox and CNN and tell us what they expect to hear from the president. It's because the script is already written, and it's all controlled. The point that I'm making is that we see these celebs, but we don't understand the power that's behind them, the puppet masters. You need to understand that you do not see these celebs, these people that are in the mainstream, by coincidence. It wasn't by chance and not because of their talents or whatever. If it is in the mainstream, it is something that has been placed there intentionally. Now. I will explain this with some care because the minute people hear something like that, they want to say, conspiracy, conspiracy theory. This is not a theory. It's just facts. Let me explain. In the mid-1980s, almost 40 years ago, there were about 50 companies in charge of most American media. And that was still a low number. But let's forget about that and fast forward to our present. Now present day, 
90%, that's right, 90% of the media in the United States is controlled by just six corporations, AT&T, Sony, Comcast, Disney, News Corp, and Viacom, now known as Paramount. 90% of what you see and hear in mass media today is controlled by six corporations. And if you understand business and power, even past the CEO and the other executives of the corporation, the real power behind corporations is in the board. Corporations have board of directors and then chairmen of those boards. So if you really understand the power, at the top of all decision making are six people, six chairmen who have the ultimate final say on what is done in the company. Therefore, ultimately controlling what we see and what we hear. This is not to say that they're in all the decisions. I mean, that's just impossible. They're just in the big ones. But their power influences the CEO and executives that they choose who will run the company the way they want it run. This is not a conspiracy theory. It's just business. Business that is not taught in our schools because they do not want us to understand how their power structures work. But that is our mass media, mostly controlled by six corporations. All of our mainstream content, and then we have distributors of the content which come to our idiot boxes that we hold in our hands, which are a few companies as well. Google, Meta, TikTok, and Twitter. This is the bulk of social media. So there is about 10 companies that control the media landscape for the United States. And for those who live internationally, listen, I'm sorry to say that the numbers aren't better for you abroad. It's actually quite worse. There are even less companies involved in the mass media around the world. So what am I trying to say? What I'm saying is that you are controlled. What you hear and see is controlled. Now they cannot control it all, but in regards to mass media in the mainstream, it is completely controlled. And then as they control the conversation in the mainstream, they can then weed out the dissidents from those that are not programmed by them. Those not under their mind control are easy to spot. I've got one that can see point that I am making clear to you is that your celebrities, the celebrities that many people follow and listen to, are completely controlled slaves. I don't care what industry, acting, music, sports, news, politics, etc. They are sold out slaves to a system that they have given their life and many of them given their souls to be a part of. I think Melissa Ford said this best way back when. And you, if, you're, if your ultimate goal is to be famous, then you're going to do a lot to do, to get there, like sign your name in blood in a contract with the devil. Like you're going to end up in a, on a one-way street and it's going nowhere. Like that's just the truth. I've seen, I've seen so many people like forsake their, their, their moral code and their value systems just for a little bit of fame. And it's, it's not worth it at the end of the day. It's really not worth it. Yeah, that's accurate. And if you don't wake up and peep the game that is being played on you, you're going to be taken down by people who have sold you out for a few dollars and the right to be famous. And the thing is that they use the black celebrities the worst. They are all major prostitutes for the system and you all give them credibility and make them who they are. If you didn't give them access to your minds, they would not be rich. And the system would keep looking for someone that they could use that will grab your attention and make you believe them. Why do you keep believing these people and allowing them to be the determination of your truth. Someone I love dearly. I've been showing him the ways of this world for many years, long before I had this channel. I would show him the homosexual activity these men would do, the sacrifices that were clearly done, the effects these people clearly had on us and our community. But he would never really hear me until these people said it themselves. He didn't want to believe it. My mom ain't here. My mama was sacrificed. Me too. You understand? Yeah. Appreciate Michael you. Jordan, what about him? His daddy, right? Bill Cosby, his son, right? Dr. Dre, his son. You know, out in Hollywood, a lot of people come up missing. But now that Kanye said it himself, it finally connected a dot for him. But it honestly, I don't think it's enough for him to move because in all honesty, he's trapped. You see, when you have attached your identity to these influencers, this means that in order for you to escape, you have to completely change and forsake who you are. So for many people, it's just easier to try and pick and choose. They'll rationalize it like, 
Now, I know this person is a coon, but maybe this person is not. Like, yeah, I always knew Puff was a sellout, but no way Nas is on that. Nas has always been on something different. This is how they think. Wake up. Let me be clear. There are six major corporations that your celebrity is being paid by and has been introduced to you through. Contracts that have been signed that has signed away their control. And when they comply and are good obedient slaves and servants, they get promoted. Like being allowed in business deals and making millions. When they try to venture out, they get canceled and ruined. And the more you allow these people to be your influence, the more likely you're going to be taken out by your enemy. People want to ask if this person is Illuminati because they threw up hand signs or because they said some garbage. But that's just dumb conversation for those that don't understand anything about this world. Those people aren't Illuminati because they throw up hand signs. They are just showing their allegiance to Satan and to the agenda against humanity. They are showing their allegiance and their enmity against you. They are declaring right in front of your face that they hate you and have sold you out. It ain't no deep Illuminati business. These people are not in the room making decisions. They are in the front taking orders waiting to do you dirty. Now, there are many different effects and influences that we can speak about on how these celebs have influenced society greatly and have transformed our culture. But this conversation will go on forever. If you're following these people and believing them and allowing them to influence you, then it all depends on the celebs that you give your ear, heart, and mind to. So I don't want to discuss that. It's way too big. The main problem that we need to discuss is how these celebs are being used to infiltrate into the truth movement. Sadly to say, so many of you are so desperate to see these celebs co-sign the truth that you're such an easy target for the enemy. And the reason I'm making this video is that it is my hopes that you sincerely wake up and do not allow this to continue any longer. For example, we have a major bit of truth that has been coming out and being exposed about the true identity of what we call African Americans. The time is here now that the truth is actually being told that the people who descend from those in the transatlantic slave trade are actually the descendants of the Israelites. They are the people who the Bible is written about. And that's the truth. I went on the Amazon Prime. I was like, you know what, let me see if there are any documentaries on Yahweh. So went in the search bar, typed in Yahweh, that came up. Went out and shared it on my platform. That was my night. In terms of the backlash or what people call it, uh, we're in 2022. History is not supposed to be hidden from anybody. And I'm not a divisive person when it comes to religion. I, I embrace all walks of life. You see it on all my platforms. I talk to all races, all cultures, all religions. And my response would be, um, it's not about educating yourself on what Semitism is and what anti-Semitism is. It's really about learning the root words of where these come from and understanding that this is an African heritage that is also belonging to the people. Africa is in it, whether we want to dismiss it or not. So the claims of anti-Semitism and who are the original chosen people of God and we go into these religious conversations and it's a big no-no. I don't live my way like that. But if you allow these people to become the face of this truth for you, you will not be a part of the beauty of the whole revelation when Yah completes it and fulfills it. Let's look over the events. When they first started with Kanye, I did not find it a coincidence that the subject was being brought up at the same time Yah had me start the Understanding Israel series. As Kanye kept talking and many people started listening to him, forming their opinions on the subject by just what he was saying, nothing else, no research, no understanding, no scripture, just what he was saying, all I could think in my head was, I really wish this man would be quiet. People would send me clips of the different things he was saying, and I was really getting irritated by this man. Not only because I understood the position he was playing, but because of how much people still could not see through him. I'm like, I thought this was made clear after he did the whole Jesus is King promotion. And then after he was done, he went back to being secular, burned his mom's house in some ritual, performed with Marilyn Manson, and then was wearing a mask for months. I remember just a few months ago when I saw them present that award to Puff and I was like, who was that weirdo behind him wearing that mask? Was that security? My wife told me it was Kanye and I could have stopped laughing. And I'm not laughing at him as much as I'm laughing at the fact that people really allow this guy to influence them. I mean, this guy is crazy. Anyways, he said a few things, but they were half truths. It's not backed up by anything. It's not backed up by scripture. It's not backed up by research. It's just a statement. 
a, a statement that has no power behind it. But because it was a major part of truth, people felt empowered that Kanye said it. Population. When I say Jew, I mean the 12 lost tribes of Judah, the blood of Christ, who the race, the people known as the race black really are. The 12 lost tribes of Judah. The... You see, people love half or quarter truths by a celebrity way more than the complete truth from someone not in the mainstream. That's sad. Anyways, after they used Kanye up, they had Kyrie not say anything but give a post about a documentary on Amazon, Hebrews to Negroes, which you should watch. But then because of the silly post, people became in an uproar because he put it on his platform and then the media starts going in. They made more noise about it than Kyrie's actual post did. I don't follow Kyrie. I would have never known about his post. And I'm sure that's the same for many of you. If they wanted whatever he was trying to say to have no merit, they could have just ignored it and then the Nets could have spoken privately to Kyrie about it and there would not be any more to it. But they made a big deal about it and they placed him in front of microphones giving him opportunities to say more, asking him questions. And what does he do with those mics? He gives out half-truths without any power behind it. Let this be clear to everyone. Being the Israelites of the Bible means nothing if you're not going to serve the God of the Israelites, Yahuwah. Kyrie made many claims that he loves and searches out all religions. He has satanic symbols tattooed on his body in many places. He has never given an ounce of repentance and claim of service to Yah. But because he is a celebrity that gave a half truth, people wanted to eat it up and trust him and support him because of the fake backlash he received through the mainstream. That's a game. Then they added the extra coons like Shaq and Barkley and LeBron to highlight their opposition. In his rant, he was mad that he even had to discuss the Kyrie controversy. He was placed in that chair and told to denounce it and speak against it, and he complied. These people, these guys right here, are used for programming for the people that are so far from the truth that they need to understand and know how to deal with it when it comes around. These guys speak about something they are told to. You need to understand that. That's why Shaq said, now he has to come on and talk about it. They speak on and give comments they are told to make in order for them to continue on with their success that they have been given. And Shaq already told you where his success comes from. What is? What is? What's going on there? That's a ring of my profession. You don't know nothing about that. Okay, well, can we get a close up on that? Yeah, yeah. What? You don't know nothing about what is the profession? Yeah, which profession are we talking about? Just look at it. Is it a legal profession? Of course it's legal. It's a legal my profession. But you trust them, why? Because they're on the idiot box. You have to peep the game being played against you. And then, to close the controversy, this last Saturday, they had Dave Chappelle come on Saturday Night Live and speak on the whole Kanye incident. And to me, he was very obviously cooning. I mean, it was completely easy to see that he was there to do the bidding of those who were signing his paychecks. I thought it was clear. But then on social media, I saw people acting like he was defending Kanye. And it made me remember when he had that special on Netflix. And I remember my friends saying that Chappelle handled it masterfully, like he was speaking for them and what they believed. But when I heard it and watched it, I just heard him normalize and give credibility to the same movement that my friends were actually against. And so after I saw Chappelle's opening bit on Saturday Night Live, I realized why he used the name The Closer on that Netflix special. This guy is masterful. He knows how to double talk in front of everyone, using truth and comedy, and speak to all sides at once. He is The Closer. Uh, I'm not for abortion. I'm not for it, but I'm not against it either. It all depends on who I get pregnant. <laughs> He's the closer because he can settle how we are all supposed to feel about it, and he leaves it at that. He came in on SNL and closed the discussion, and that's what they called him in for. He closed it and told everyone how they were to feel. This guy is a master manipulator, and that's why they called him in. He didn't help the truth. He helped everyone understand how they were to deal with it and communicate about it. He put everyone in their place, and hence, he was the closer. 
And so many of you fall for these people. They called this man in, created some fake controversy to get people's attention that he was going to be speaking, and then let him go on stage and close the controversy. So in the end, all of you led by these people were properly steered. It was masterful hurting. That's all it was. Let me tell you, all of you who follow these celebrities and were happy that Kanye and Kyrie were giving out these half-truths without power, let me explain the game that has been played on you. The first strategy you must use with these celebs is that they are controlled opposition. Controlled opposition is when a movement is actually being led by agents of the opposite side. They infiltrate a group and use their agents to control their opposition from the inside. Nearly all governments in history have employed this technique to trick and subdue their adversaries. This is a major strategy that has been consistently used by our enemy for centuries. They have used this in the churches, giving congregations pastors that never really let their members know how much the devil is against them. And they never teach that this is the actual battle believers face. They have used controlled opposition with the conspiracy theory space, giving men like Alex Jones a platform that allowed people to know something was wrong, but controlling how far they actually went with it. And then when Donald Trump came on the scene, the baton of it all, the conservative movement, the conspiracy theorist groups, and other groups, the baton and control of it all fell into Donald Trump's lap. This was by design, but people not understanding their enemy fall for this strategy every time. So be clear, these people are controlled. They are given platforms and made successful by the same people you think that they are against. They are rich. They don't eat in the same places, the same restaurants. They don't go to the same places. They're given mansions on hills. They have massive obligations that you probably cannot even fathom. They have massive debt. They need their income. If you believe they want to risk it all to tell you the truth, you are a little too naive. And that is a problem that you really need to think on. I mean, you really think that these people with families to support and major obligations are all about risking it all to give you a half truth without any power behind it? That's ridiculous. How many of you risk your jobs and your family's livelihood to speak against the wrongs at your jobs? Now, I mean, don't get me wrong. There are many of us out there. I mean, this is one reason why I couldn't do corporate America as much as I actually try. Because of my family upbringing, I should have been bred to be a part of them. But I just couldn't do it. Selling out for a dollar and some clout doesn't fit with me. But anyways, they use these people as a way to get their own handle on the situation or truth. They use these people to control the narrative as these truths come out. Because this subject about the true identity of the Hebrews is all about prophecy that will unfold. And the devil is always working on creating narratives that explain things away from the power of Yah. So what they did with Kanye and Kyrie is put a small dose of the truth out there and made their red line so that they could scare off people from engaging in this truth. And they used these controlled ops to push their programming. And the only reason you might have believed Kanye and Kyrie are on the side of the truth is because you fell for the game. And let's be clear, this isn't a new game. They play this out in reality consistently and they show us in many movies. This is the metaphor. I want you to pay attention and understand. Whenever the feds wanted to infiltrate a group that they could not stop with other methods, they needed to get an inside man to bring them down from within. These are called undercover agents. They are modern day Judas. They use people that look like and sound like the group they are trying to infiltrate. And in order to gain credibility, they publicly crucify them. For instance, how many organized crime members met their undercovers in jail? where they make them do some dirt in the streets to prove they are not cops. Movies like Donnie Brasco or that movie In Too Deep or the recent movie Judas and the Black Messiah. Many other movies and situations. Too much to count. They have to create a reason for you to believe that these people are not sellouts and are not with them. So by them publicly crucifying these people, showing that the media is against them and everyone's against them, it then gives credibility to these people. It's like how they say Kanye lost a billion in four days, something like that. Kanye West under fire, vilified, his business partners jumping ship after all that hate speech. Yes, it's another episode of Kanye West, the embattled billionaire. Just stupid by itself, by the way. All it means is that he never really was a billionaire, but by mouth and claim. But anyways, they publicly bring these people down, which then makes these people look like outsiders. 
and then the program is received. People believe that these people are valid because they are losing everything and being brought down, while the insiders, the other sellouts, get the message that this will happen to you if you come out and align to these truths. So everyone's getting the message that is being sent to them. It's all manipulation. And you that fall for it can be likened to the people that are allowing these undercover agents to come into our communities and take us down. When I introduce you, I'm gonna say, this is a friend of mine. That means you're connected again. When Lefty brought Donnie into his world. Who's this guy? This Donnie, a friend of mine. He took a risk on a kid he hardly knew. He gave him his trust. He loved him like a son, but he never knew the truth. If we all lived in truth, and we all took a hard line and did not allow these celebrities to be preachers and teachers of our truth, this strategy would not be able to work and more people would actually wake up or be less prone to the enemy. People love half-truths or edited truths. It's like people saying they celebrate Christmas and Easter because it's a great day to preach the gospel. Or really, celebrating a pagan holiday, worshiping him in a way he condemns is a great way to bring people to him? Yes, you might have brought people into part of the truth, but because it's tainted, it has no power. And that is the same with what Kanye and Kyrie and Nick Cannon and all of them have done. Yes, they are giving truth, but there's no power behind it. So you know what happens? They actually become the reasoning behind the suppression of the truth. And you cheer them on the whole way through it. Let's be clear that you need to stop believing these celebs and that they are helping in bringing out these truths. They are not on your side. The more you align to them, the more you are aligning with strategies of war against you by your enemy. The war we are engaged in comes in many different forms, and before it ever gets physical, it first is engaged against us mentally and spiritually, and you are all being played by the mental war being waged against us. These people are being used to infiltrate our faith and the truth and they bring it down from within. So now because of these men, there are certain things that need to be said boldly that we need to tiptoe around in order not to get fully flagged or suppressed. You do not need a celebrity to co-sign your faith or your truth. If your faith is truth, it can stand on its own regardless of who co-signs it or not. The truth is that many of you are looking for someone in the mainstream to lead you or you're looking for a movement to follow where well, this isn't what Yah is doing. We have our leader our Messiah through Yahusha, and if you would tie yourself to him and follow his words, you wouldn't need these celebrities. There must be rules and thought processes used if you ever give your trust to these celebrities. And if you do not understand this, I ask you to go back to the drawing board about your own faith. Understand, repentance is a real thing. To repent is to feel or express sincere regret or remorse about one's wrongdoing or sin. If you're going to follow anyone, especially a celeb who says they are in your faith, there must be conviction against sin, especially theirs. If you have come into faith of Messiah, did you not ever feel convicted against the sin that you allowed in your life? If you haven't, like I said, you need to go back to the word. Repentance must happen. And with these celebs that have fallen the furthest, sacrificing their family, selling their soul to the devil. I sold my soul to the devil. I know it's a crappy deal. Lisa came with a few toys like a happy meal. Making their demonic videos, putting satanic symbols on their bodies. Repentance for them should be great. It should be strong. And it should also come with making sure that others do not follow them or others like them. Most of the videos that I make come from making sure that others don't fall for the deceptions I once did. If these people are just giving out certain truths, but the power of Yah is not behind them, do not follow nor believe them. Pray for them. Hope that they are coming out, or at least trying to come out of that deception. But that does not mean you give them your trust and believe what they are saying. I do pray for Kanye in particular, because he truly is tormented. And at this time, it seems that he is suicidal, looking for an out. But I will never give him trust without him seriously displaying the fruits of the Spirit and showing a man in true repentance. He very well could be a baby Christian, as all you like to say. But do you think baby Christians should be our leaders and representatives? Listen, baby Christians need to be quiet and let their faith be nurtured and grown. 
But with Kanye in particular, he is given instant credibility and elevation because of his stature as a celebrity. And from this, he is able to steer and lead those who are not living fully in Yah. He is able to lead them straight into deception. He has been doing this ever since he came out as a Christian, and he did his Sunday church thing, and everyone flocked to him. These people, ready to be steered and led by someone who needs to be steered and led. That's dangerous. We need to clearly tell celebrities, listen, celebrities, please hold your truths. If you believe something to be the truth and you're exposing lies, it would be very helpful if you would refrain from speaking on it and just fall back and learn more on your own silently. Your stardom and celebrity status brings more distraction from the truth than it does on exposing the truth. As a celebrity, you know certain deals you made, contracts you signed, people you shook hands with, and before you become a representative of truth, you need to deal with these mistakes you made. So Mr. or Miss Celebrity, please hold your truth and keep it to yourself until you are built stronger to defend yourself against the devil you embraced to help make you the celebrity that you are. That's what we need to say to every celebrity every time there is someone coming out with some form of truth. And for the rest of us that are learning and growing in the truth, please know that you do not need a celebrity or the mainstream to co-sign your faith. If mainstream actually co-signs it, it's not the truth and it's based in some form of a lie. If you notice, the main truth that Kanye and Kyrie were actually bringing up were not even discussed, but the whole thing was masqueraded under a title of anti They used this term against them. The validity of this subject and the topic that they were bringing up was not discussed because the system is against the truth and they covered it up with a lie. Yes, I am happy that these truths are finally being brought out and I am happy that the rattling of the bones is happening. But I am not giving Kanye and Kyrie credit for that. This is the enemy speaking on stuff that he has to speak on. He just used people that he owned and controlled to do it. They are his agents. And while they brought attention to the truth, they also assisted in reducing the power of it. Because even if many people were believing that they were the true descendants of Israel, they still neglect and reject the God of Israel that gave them the power and the reason why this bloodline is important. It's edited truth. It's truth without power. And these youngins don't know what to do with it, but chop it up with the whole fake system and they just ignore it. These youngins know everything is a lie and they don't care. They need the power that comes with this truth. We should not be so desperate to look for people in the mainstream to co-sign our faith and our beliefs. We should expect them not to do this. And we should not be so open and giving out the benefit of the doubt when someone comes out and says they are aligned with us and our faith. Many of you who have been brought up in these churches have been taught that you are to be naive and basically a sucker for tricks and deception as long as someone says Jesus and gives a little bit of truth, when it's actually quite the opposite. Through the power of the Ruach HaKadosh, the Holy Spirit, you have been given the power of the sermon. You should come to understand the fruits of the flesh versus the fruits of the Spirit. Yahusha told us, Behold, I send you out as sheep in the midst of wolves. Therefore, be wise as serpents and harmless as doves. That's Matthew chapter 10, verse 16. When we are wise as serpents, we should be able to see through the cunningness and deception of our enemies. But many of you practicing religion are with this innocent before proven guilty thing. When the truth is that these celebs are absolutely guilty and need a lot of evidence to be proven innocent. Now, is this to say that a celebrity cannot repent and come into the faith and into the truth? Absolutely not. But in this time, as the control of the enemy is so vast, their status and the media speaking on them is evidence of great sin. And before we allow them as leaders of the truth, they need to prove themselves as men or women truly of faith and not just Judas's. And while many of you may not understand that because some of you cannot fathom the things that they have done, they know what they have done and they would understand that if their faith is true. Some of the reasons many of you follow them is more about covetedness and idolatry more than it is about Yah and your desire to have his truth spread. All of this needs to be done away with. Therefore, put to death your members which are on the earth, fornication, uncleanness, passion, evil desire, and covetedness, 
which is idolatry. Because of these things, the wrath of Elohim is coming upon the sons of disobedience, in which you yourselves once walked when you lived in them. That's Colossians chapter 3 verses 5 through 7. Remember how you are to deal with these celebrities. Do not idolize them or covet the things they have or the positions of power you think they hold. The right attitude you should have for them is remorse for them. They are clear evidence of the deceived and the direction they are headed is not good. When we follow them, it's because of the thoughts of idolatry and covetousness that we must shake off. We have been sold a way of living that is all about obtaining riches and glory, and it all leads to a separation from Yah. We all must remove ourselves from this. They have lured us in to trust them because they have been made to look as ones who are wealthy. For some reason, we equate wealth with wisdom. That is not always the case, especially during these wicked times. And they have gained most of our trust because many of us want their riches and their influence. So we look at them as people we should trust. But that's because we're looking at them with the eyes of our flesh and not the eyes of a righteous spirit. Don't follow them or desire to be like them. Remember, those who desire to be rich fall into temptation and a snare and into many foolish and harmful lusts which drown men in destruction and perdition. For the love of money is a root of all kinds of evil, for which some have strayed from the faith in their greediness and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. But you, O man of God, flee these things and pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, gentleness. Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life, to which you were also called and have confessed the good confession in the presence of many witnesses. That's 1 Timothy chapter 6, verses 9 through 12. It is important that we all recognize that Satan is coming after us and desires to remove us from Yah. These celebrities are paid millions and given platforms so that they can be used as resources for the enemy, not for Yah. Do not follow them, nor give them your trust. They do not get the benefit of the doubt and they need to do a lot to gain your trust, because they did a lot to lose it. If you're going to be a part of the assembly of Yahusha, you must actually follow him and align to his will. He doesn't need celebrities or the mainstream. In fact, he told us that he would not have them, but the world would hate us because they hate him. Don't use fake controversy as a justification of a celeb. They are on a different level because of the things that they did to get there. So if they are on a different level, what you need to see from them in order to trust them also is on a different level. We cannot be out here playing games with our faith. We have jobs to do. We are to be the examples of truth. And I assure you the devil won't give it airtime unless he is denouncing it, suppressing it, or telling others to condemn it. It is your job to be an immovable wall that stands for the truth. And you must be the examples that you wish these celebrities actually were. Do not look for them to be the movement that you are looking for. Let Yah lead you enough so that you can be the example. We are the proclaimers of truth. We are the righteousness of Yah. And we will not be celebrities in the people in the mainstream that these celebrities will align with. But in the end, the world will know and remember that we were on the right path and maybe by our example and our steadfastness, we can help bring many of them off the path of destruction that they're currently on. There is so much more I can say on this topic, but the main thing I want you to understand is that it's not a celeb's job to bring attention to the truth. It is your job. So do not follow these men and women who are being used as infiltrators to the truth. Do not follow these people giving their edited versions of the truth. But be one who is aligned fully to Yah, doing His will, serving Him through His power, and being one who is giving the world truth. That's unedited. Be blessed. Hallelujah. Praise Yah. Okay. Thanks again for watching. I really had to get all that off my chest. If this has blessed you, please make sure to like it and share it with others. If you have not done so already, please make sure to subscribe to this channel. Elohim willing, I upload every Friday. Also, don't forget to subscribe to this channel on Facebook and Instagram, as well as on my website, truthunedited.com. As always, I'd like to thank all who donate and contribute to this ministry. Please know your donations are truly a blessing to this ministry, and they help very much. 
Thank you for your love and your support and letting our father use you. You are truly a blessing and I really appreciate your support. Be blessed. Okay. Thanks again, everyone, for watching. I love you all.